Our next lecture is on measurements and units. It's basically how to use a ruler um, to ensure that you have proper measurements. Uh, we will use this again later in the semester when we create die lines, so keep that in mind. Before I start the lecture, I want to point out a couple things. When you log on to Canvas, you will see a bunch of things when you log on to the lecture. Underneath, I've included uh, both the slideshow so that you can go through that at your own pace. You don't have to go through it with me if you don't want to. But I've also included the homework and an extra credit worksheet. It is very important that you print these worksheets at 100% scale, uh, especially the homework. And when you get to the quiz, there's also a download on there. If you do not print them at 100% scale, they will not print to the right size and none of your measurements will be correct. So for that reason, I've printed 50 copies of them. They're inside room N181 over at the South City campus, and you can pick them up at any time that's convenient for you. If there's a class in the room, it's okay to walk in and pick it up. Just be polite and say, excuse me. Uh, they are, as soon as you walk in on the right-hand side, there's a red bin that has a bunch of colored envelopes. I use that for one of my other classes. But in the top bin on the left-hand side, I will put... Actually, I'll put it on the right-hand side since that's what I wrote on your on the website here. Uh, on the right hand side I'll put all the printouts so if you take one from me you're assured it's the right size. Okay so let's get started on our lecture. So our next lecture is on measurements and units and it says part one because we're going to revisit this when we get to our die line um, a lecture. It's on the layouts um, lecture. Our objectives are to identify things that might be on a typesetter's ruler we're going to do it at kind of like a very surface level right now, but we'll get into calculating the differences between points and picas later in the semester. Today we're just going to identify them and be able to measure with the ruler. So we're going to identify inches, millimeters, centimeters, picas, points, and weights on a typesetter's ruler. You should have some sort of ruler. If you don't have a typesetter's ruler for this class, it's not the biggest deal, but they're not that expensive and you will use them if you ever take uh, Art 1230 type and layout or Art 2230 advanced type and layout. So it's a good idea to purchase one. Secondly, we're going to identify fractions when talking about inches, so 1 8th, 1 4th, 1 16th, etc. I do want to point out that when you measure, you do not want to go beyond 1 16th. If you try to measure to the 32nd, it will not line up with any of my measurements because I only went to a 16th of an inch. Most rulers only have to a 16th of an inch, so you probably don't even have the option for a 32nd. Secondly, we'll start measuring and identifying segment lengths. And lastly, uh, we'll use a ruler to draw segments based on a given measurement. Now, number four, we're going to go through, but it's extra credit. If you look on Canvas, um, it's not graded. And just a refresher on extra credit, in Art 1210, anytime you do extra credit, at the end of the semester, uh, for each one extra credit assignment you do, your grade will be increased by one percentage. You can earn up to 5% on your grade that way. So the first five extra credit uh, activities that you complete, you can go from a 90 to a 95 or from an 83 to an 88, etc. It can bring you up a whole half of a grade. So if you end up with an A minus, you can bring it up to a regular A by completing five extra credits. So far, we've had two extra credits. So practice exam one, um, this would be number two. Uh, number three is there's an Adobe event that I posted on Canvas, so you can go to that as well. And I'll post them randomly, and you'll probably have the opportunity to do about 10 throughout the semester. But just remember, only five count towards bringing your grade up. Okay, so what is a typesetter's ruler? Rulers come in all shapes and sizes. Some are used by construction workers, some by elementary school children, and others are used by graphic arts professionals. Each ruler, depending on what the output is or who's using it, if it's an elementary school student or a, or a graphic designer, um, will come with different sets of measurements. Um, usually, there's multiple sets. If you look at the ruler right here, there's only one set, um, and I believe it is centimeters. Um, but if you look at a traditional ruler, it would have inches on one side and centimeters on the other. Um, you can have points and picas on different types of rulers. What we're going to focus on down here is a typesetter's ruler. It's also referred to as an E-gauge because it has a bunch of E's on it. Uh, when you get to your 1230 class, they'll explain what that means, but it's a way to measure type. So we would measure lines and inches or centimeters, but if you want to figure out how big type is to recreate it, let's say you have a flyer and you have to recreate it, you would measure it using the E-gauge portion. So, um, some other things that you need to remember about a typesetter's ruler is that 
If you choose to buy one, you should buy a transparent ruler, um, especially when you're using a typesetter's ruler. With a typesetter's ruler, you're often going to put it over something visually and have to see through it to decide how thick it is or how tall it is. If I choose an opaque ruler, like this typesetter's ruler on the left here, and I have to measure how big a letter E is, I can't do that by seeing through it, so I have to eyeball it. But if I choose one that's like the one down here and I can see through it, I'll be able to put the E right on top of the letter I'm trying to measure and I can measure it more precisely. Also, um, since typesetter rulers usually are transparent, they will not come with a corked back because that would make it opaque. Um, corked back rulers are really good to use if you have to draw lines. So usually what we'll use a typesetter's ruler for is measuring things. If you wanted to actually draw a line or something, you'd use a different type of ruler. But what I want to point out about cork fact rulers are they're really good if you're trying to draw with something that is like a wet medium. So have you ever, ever used a ruler and a marker and when you draw along the edge of the ruler and you pull it back it kind of sprays the marker um, and you don't get a nice hard line? The reason why that is is because the ruler is touching the paper at the same time. If you had a cork back ruler the straight edge that you're drawing along would still have wet ink on it from the marker, but because it's raised up and the cork is touching the paper, not the actual ruler, you won't get that spray off effect of pulling the ruler back and seeing a line spread out from the line you tried to make. So last but not least, before we leave the typesetter ruler, let's identify where things would be. And since this is a very typical typesetter's ruler, it is the one that you should purchase um, if you take Art 1135, the printing class, and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to start left to right. Left to right is a weight, and the weight is the thickness or the measure of a line. So if you're working in, let's say, Adobe InDesign or Illustrator, and you create a path, and you want to put a border on something, it's called a stroke. And to make the stroke fatter or skinnier, you would increase or decrease the weight. You can use these points, three-point line, eight-point line, etc., to decide how thick that line should be. Across the top, this should look familiar to us. It's what we're going to focus on today. It's inches. On the bottom, we have picas. On the right-hand side, we have points. We have an e-gauge, which is used to measure um, how, how large font is. And then we have a leading gauge. And we don't specifically cover leading in this class, but leading is measured from the baseline of one line of type to the baseline of another. And it's a spacing between rows of words. So if you want to increase or decrease the spacing between lines of type, you would increase the letting. And you can use this to identify how big the letting is. Please take a minute to identify the same measurements on your ruler. And if your ruler doesn't have the same ones, please identify which ones are missing and which ones you have. At the very least for this lecture, you will need inches.